Hello all. Today, we are here to discuss about one of the most recent current affairs issues which has been doing rounds in the news for the past few days. On 12th January 2018, that is last Friday, four of the senior most judges of the Supreme Court, bar the Chief Justice of India, Deepak Mishra, held a press conference and gave to the press a letter which they had sent to the CGI regarding certain reforms in the Supreme Court of India. The judges involved were Jasti Chellameshwar, Sri Ranjan Gogoi, Sri Madan B. Lokur, and Sri Kurian Joseph. Of this, Mr. Ranjan Gogoi is to become the next Chief Justice of India. He is in line to become the next Chief Justice of India. Now, what the judges said was that they feared the independence of judiciary was in danger. The contents of the letter which they had written to the Supreme, uh, the Chief Justice of India had mainly mentioned three points. So I'd first be looking at those three points or uh, what the contention was. And I'd also be looking at it specifically from the UPSC point of view. Now if you look at the UPSC point of view, the entire thing, the political angles are not that relevant. We are going to look at the constitutional angle, the judiciary in crisis angle and also the ethical angle. Quite specifically, why I look at the ethical angle is because what the four judges did can be considered as an act of whistleblowing. So in that, we will have to look into whether it was ethical whistleblowing or ethical public interest disclosure or not. So first things first, we'll take a look at what the four distinguished judges of Supreme Court said in the letter to the Chief Justice of India. As I said, it was mainly three points which they wanted to tell the Chief Justice. The first point was that there has been certain instances where the Chief Justice of India has been assigning cases which are of in importance, which is of great national importance to benches without any rationale. Now this has a couple of backgrounds to it. For example, last November, again the Supreme Court was in crisis. Now this was a case uh, regarding a medical college and a demand for setting up of a special investigation team to investigate a case of bribery potentially involving members of judiciary and potentially involving members of judiciary in the Supreme Court or judges of the Supreme Court for that matter. Now in this case, a former Orissa High Court judge, I.M. Kudusi, was arrested for apparently trying to bribe members of the judiciary to give a favorable judgment to a medical college which had been denied admission or denied the permission to conduct admission by the Medical Council of India. And the judgment for the said case which went in favor of the appellant was given by Justice Deepak Mishra, who is now the Chief Justice of India. Now the appeal before the Supreme Court or a particular plea or a public interest litigation was filed by Advocate Prashant Pushan before a judge, before a bench, sorry, before a bench headed by Justice Jasti Chalameshwar, demanding one, the creation of a special investigation team to actually look into the matter and see if any members of the judiciary were involved. And two, that the matter should be examined by a constitutional bench of which the CJI is not a part. Now the reason was, because the CJI was involved in that case, him being part of the constitutional bench would constitute a grave conflict of interest. Justice Chalameshwar heard it and 
passed an order to set up a constitutional bench. Now, here are where things get a bit complicated. Why? Because in the Supreme Court or even in the High Court, the Chief Justice is the most important person as far as administration is concerned. He is the sole proprietor of administration. It is the Chief Justice alone who gets to set the benches, not any other judge. Now, the Chief Justice of India found Justice Chalamesha's act to be an act of misconduct and immediately called a petition to his bench and reconstituted the constitutional bench. This was a major, this was a news during the November time. It's a time when most of you, most of us were just out of the prelims, uh, sorry, mains. And immediately after that, there was a couple of months of lull, of which the judges accused that there have been many, very many cases in which Mr. Deepak Mishra, as Chief Justice, had assigned to benches of very benches, which is constituted of judges of least seniority. Now, according to the judges itself, themselves, the meeting on Friday with the press was held because of one particular incident, which is regarding the bench which was to sit on the appeal to Justice Loya's death. Justice Loya was a judge of a lower court who was sitting in judgment of the controversial Sohrabuddin Sheikh case. And supposedly he died in mysterious circumstances against which there was an appeal to Supreme Court for a more thorough investigation. Now this was given, according to judges, to a bench of least seniority. It cannot be doubted that the Chief Justice of India, the Chief Justice of India, is the ultimate arbiter as far as administration of the court is concerned. But usually, cases of importance are he headed or cases of importance are heard by benches considering of senior judges and not junior ones. Now, this convention was broken. It did not go well with the said judges. And according to them, they had approached the CBI, sorry, CJI, on even the day they were to give the press conference, but they were not heard. The CJI did not give them an ear, and that is why they had to go to the press to save democracy and to save the independence of judiciary, so to speak. Now, in Justice Chalamesha's case, before on the November judgment, it is a lot of justices and chief justices actually supported his judgment on building a constitutional bench because they felt that under Article 142, a judge or judiciary is supposed to go to any extent to procure justice. And this was the case, even though Ms. the CJI Deepak Mishra was not mentioned by the CBI in its investigation report, which cast a shadow of doubt on the integrity of the Jesus of India and presented a clear case of conflict of interest. It would have been wiser in the Jesus of India's own admission to have maybe found a better solution to the problem than the hasty one which was taken. Similarly, the second problem which they were talking about. This has been in the news for some time. It is the need to revisit the procedure for appointment of judges or the qualifications for whom to be appointed as judges. And also about punishments other than impeachment for the judges. At the present moment, according to the Constitution of India and otherwise, there is only one way in which a judge can be punished. That is not really impeachment, it's actually removal. You can only remove a judge, and that too by a resolution passed by both the Houses of Parliament as a quasi-judicial process, mind you. A resolution passed by both the Houses of Parliament with two by third members, majority, present and voting, and then signed by the President of India, in which the judge who is being held on trial 
gets a chance to defend himself in the second house. So it's a very complicated process. But there has been a lot of demand through law commissions and even uh, general public outside, civil society, etc., that there should be other mechanisms to punish judges for minor dismanners. Dismanners. Like minor misdemeanors, sorry, misdemeanors. Like, say, uh, using foul language or, say, corruption, etc. Small misdemeanors need smaller punishments. This was. This actually came into news last year regarding Justice Karnan. Justice Karnan was convicted for con con uh, contempt of court and then sent to jail. Now, again, the media and everyone, every constitutional critic had come out and said, there's only one person or one authority in India which can punish a judge, and that is not judiciary. It is the legislature of India, the parliament of India, which alone has the power to punish a judge, or that is to remove the judge, him or her. So obviously in this case, there's actually a huge demand for minor forms of punishment, which the judiciary has to take up. They have not taken it up yet. This has been a reform demand, which has been there for a very long time. The third, which is in relation to the second one, is that the memorandum of procedure should for appointing or memorandum procedure for functioning of the collegium should be taken up by the constitution bench. Now this memorandum of procedure, if you can cast your mind back, came about following the controversial NJAC judgment or the National Judicial Appointments Commission judgment. Now what happened was after the National Judicial Appointments Commission judgment, Supreme Court themselves acknowledged that the collegium was not the best working system. And they were further forced following a dissenting judgment by none other than Justice Telemichur himself, who said that the collegium system had not worked and it has been an inefficient system which has to be thrown out. The Supreme Court had to accept the collegium system is not working fine, so we have to improve it, we have to make it better. But the memorandum procedure after getting in a lot of suggestions from the government, from media and the courts on suggestions, advocates, etc., is, has not reached anywhere. And obviously, uh, everyone would want it to be heard by a senior bench. Now, this is uh, the request of what is known as the R.P. Lutra case. The R.P. Lutra case is regarding the memorandum, memorandum of procedure to be taken up immediately. So, this was the demand by the three judges. The main controversial sticking point were two. One, according to judicial protocol, serving judges are not supposed to speak to the media. That has been broken. So this is a clear case of whistleblowing or whatever, or a break of judicial protocol, whichever way you want to look at it. Second, in the first demand, they are placing question marks on the conduct of none other than the Chief Justice of India himself. That is, there is a clear discord between the judiciary and not just the Chief Justice of India. When they actually talk about benches other than, they are questioning the integrity of the judges in those benches as well. So it actually points to a huge break, a schism of sorts, a schism of sorts in the Supreme Court of India, which is a major issue which we have to deal with. That is a crisis. Now, looking at the three major events, all the three points raised are valid. Now, we have to look in, are the judges rightful in going the way they did? Now, for any whistleblowing exercise, or if you look at whistleblowing, there are three conditions to be satisfied for it to be ethical. Because any whistleblowing, you would be going against your brothers, that is your brothers in the organization. So in this case, these seniors most judges are going against their brother judges. So if you look at the three conditions for ethical whistleblowing, the first condition sorry, is that the material with which you are going out to the public or to the press has to be perfect. 
that is it has to be legally sourced one and it should be a valid material now in this case the letter was sent to the cji and these things are these three issues are already in public domain especially uh, the shifting of benches in november had come into media limelight and even been reported by international media as a crisis in india supreme court so definitely the material has validity to it we are in need of judicial reforms the second is the notion of success should be there and the matter should be urgent the notion of success yes or no maybe maybe not but definitely the way the media has picked it up the way there has been constitutional debates going on the last three or four days and there has been huge pressure to find a solution to the problem obviously points to the fact that there has been a certain notion of success or a certain amount of success for that matter also the matter has to be urgent in which case also we can maybe side with the four judges because matter of judicial reforms are of utmost importance to the country we have been wanting crying out for judicial reforms for so long and we have been having we are not having any of sorts the only attempt by the legislature at creating a judicial reform that is a national judicial accountability commission was actually thrown out so there is this urge by the judiciary or members of the judiciary itself themselves to actually bring about a reform in judiciary is actually good but the press aspect is the problem the third is and this is the most important one this is the most critical one in this all avenues for grievance redressal within the organization should have been exhausted before you go to the public now this is where the major problem or sticking point arises most of the members of judiciary most of the retired judges retired chief justices uh, for example retired chief justice of india justice t s thakur have criticized these judges for going out of the press the judges themselves say that they had given this letter multiple times to the chief justice of india and they believed that that was the final thing which they could do that was the final uh, grievance redressal mechanism that they had while the other judges say they could have taken it to the other brother judges of the court we are not exactly sure in this case why because judiciary themselves have been not have not been transparent the judiciary in india has not at all been transparent the common man does not know what happens within the courts or between judges are they happy or how they arrive at judgments it's completely blacked out to the public the institution which is the guardian of right to transparency in india right to information in india themselves are not transparent and that is why we do not know about this final act if going giving to the cji and if they had also informed their brother judges about their decision then probably they had exhausted all their other avenues and felt that they had no other way but to go to the public with this in that case the whistle blowing makes ethical but if they had not gone if they had an option to address the entire quorum of brother judges in the supreme court and inform them of the issue and together approach the judges with it if there was an option for that and they did not take it in that case this whistle blowing would become unethical and it would actually increase gravity because they've actually broken judicial protocol which has not been broken thus far in post independent india now if if other judges get confident of this no matter we we cannot predict next what will happen so by breaking judicial protocol they knew they were violating a norm a convention which has been there for a very long time close to 150 years has been broken so what next now whistle blowing ethical or not that i leave up to you it depends on you i given the both sides the story but we need a way forward in this don't we we can't have the supreme court or judges of the supreme court fighting with each other we need a way forward now the most common way forward which has been suggested in the last couple of days is to 
summon a full court to discuss the matters and try to pass it. So full court is a 25 judges, all of whom would have different, different opinions. Would they be successful in solving the problems? It's to be seen. I think in the coming days, we would soon see that case. But more pressing, now even if the full court summons and this crisis is hushed up, the final and essential problem is that of judicial reforms. We badly need judicial reforms. Judiciary requires transparency. There has to be more accountability to judges, more accountability and transparency in the process of appointment of judges. The people need to know the caliber of judges being appointed to the Supreme Court. Even in the Justice Karnan issue, the major talking point was the fact that why was Justice Karnan appointed in the first place? Why, if you say that this person is mentally unstable, as was being said by the Supreme Court at that point of time, why was this person appointed as a judge in a high court in the first place? And if you look at uh, the composition of judges in the Supreme Court, the composition of judges is also a problem. Just one, one women judge that two recently appointed. And also the number of the total mix in Supreme Court concerning the number of minorities is very limited. So we need to have a better mix of judges in Supreme Court. We need to have overall reforms to judiciary, the criminal justice system as well. That could be the final solution to the problem. And that should be the final solution to the problem. If we look at it from a point, from a citizen's point of view. The judiciary is the last respite of the citizen. If they don't work well, our polity, political system itself would come under trouble. Now, before I end this, there is, there is one curious little addendum being added. A few people are asking this. Two things, again. One is, recently, as I said, the Collegium made a few appointments, and the members of the Collegium itself has now turned against the Collegium, that's the senior most judge of the Supreme Court. So, would that appointment now be valid? Also, now CJI and the senior most judges again have to sit in judgment for the Collegium. Would they be able to do justice to their job? Would they function smoothly again? That's, those are two questions to be answered. Also, Justice Ranjan Gogoi is the next in line to be Jesus of India. Now, the question asked is, now he has just broken judicial propriety. Would such a person sh or should such a person be appointed as Chief Justice? There has been cases of bypassing members of judiciary as Chief Justices before. Two instances. In the first instance, Following the Keshavananda Bharati judgment, Justice Shelath, Hedge, and Grover were bypassed, and Justice A. N. Ray was made Chief Justice of India in 1975, 74-75 time. And even more critically, one of India's most distinguished judicial luminaries, Justice H. R. Khanna, was bypassed as Chief Justice of India reportedly following his dissenting judgment in the ADM Jabalpur case. The dissenting judgment of Justice H.R. Khanna in the ADM Jabalpur case became the bedrock of the Maneka Gandhi case and the judicial activism which followed that. So, would Justice Ranjan Gogoi, in this case, a person who has not dissented against the executive as the other judges had done, but a person who has dissented against judiciary itself be considered as the next justice of India. That is another question which we have to ask. Now, the specific instances of why I mentioned the judges who were bypassed, UPSC has a strange habit of asking these kinds of related questions for prelims. So that's just an additional bookstore point I gave you. So hopefully the next time we meet, at least this crisis would be over and we will get something new to talk about. 
that in mind thank you and goodbye